what is up you guys it's your girl sandra welcome back to the channel today i want to talk briefly about this documentary on netflix that's got people upset and people ready to boycott about this loser who killed at least 17 people and primarily targeted black people If you live on this side of the world, then it's very possible, very likely that you have heard of this new documentary. Um, out of respect and because of anger, I will not be posting pictures of the actual serial killer, but I am going to highlight the actors um, who you can see here, Nisi Nash and Evan Peters. I'm not familiar with him. Um, this is the first time I've heard of him and he is the actor who portrays the serial killer. Like I said, I will not be highlighting the actual murderer himself because he does not deserve that. I also want to notate that my commentary has no reflection on the actual actors themselves i get it they got a role they got paid for it they did what they had to do this is not a reflection on the actors at all i just want to make that very very clear but i do want to make a few points about not only the this particular killer himself but other killers as i've mentioned before if you follow me on social media i have commentated on this before um I have a background on psychology. I have a bachelor's in psychology and um, I have always been fascinated with the human mind, how it operates, why people do what they do and what drives people for various different reasons, not just um, when it comes to killings, but for everything else. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate because the ID channel, you know, and channels that cover things like this like killings and documentaries about murders um they're not popular for no reason so naturally human beings are intrigued by things like that and i'm not ashamed to say that i used to be one of those people until i realized that most of these documentaries kind of always left me disappointed now disappointed in the sense that not at the actual serial i'm talking about serial killing documentaries particularly i used to be one of those people that watched document serial killer documentaries and you know past tapes and such and i came to the conclusion that i was always disappointed at the end of every documentary and it wasn't necessarily at the actual person who committed the crime but at the investigation or lack thereof in the incompetence of usually the police department and those people working the crimes and the pe people around those committing the crimes so for me what i found was that the way they tried to portray serial killers as like oh they are so smart they're elusive they are um you know they're so intelligent that they can outwit any group of police department and get away with crimes but what i found to be was there is the this is a fair first point that i want to make there is this inability for people to see evil or bad when it comes to white people for example a black person driving down the street in a brand new car is more likely to get stopped than a white person who has killed 5, 10, 20 people. Why? Because there's this innate ability or inability to see bad or evil when it comes to white people. If you take the TV show, Netflix TV show called You, it's about the serial killer, right? And But if you were to go back, I don't know if you guys have seen that show. I, I think I only watched one season and I'm not interested in seeing the rest. For the main reason was that there are so many opportunities to stop this person, to search what's going on, which would have led to the discovery of evidence and potentially further investigation that would not not only have gotten this person caught but would have also prevented other murders so i was always left disappointed in the sense that this could have been prevented and this person is not as smart as you guys try to make them seem but because you guys don't want to seem as if you're incompetent you guys choose to have this story about oh they were just so smart and successful at what they do that's why they got away with it like I mentioned, there is a lot of outrage behind this documentary. A lot of people want to boycott it. A lot of people want it to be taken off the air. People don't see the purpose of telling these stories. And I think the trauma stems from 
the same point that I made, I just made, not just um, what happened and the fact that it's um, this serial killer is basically being glorified and be given the spotlight, which I'm going to touch on in a little bit, but it is to the effect that these people, meaning Jeffrey um, Nisi Nash, the main, like I said, I'm not seeing the this one. I don't plan on seeing it. I've heard about him. I've seen documentaries about him before, and I believe that there is another um, tape. His tapes are said to be released on Netflix. You know, I don't know if they're still planning on doing that, right? But Nisi Nash, the character she plays is, I believe, the neighbor who keeps complaining to the police for months to no avail. She was completely disregarded she kept calling telling them about this this man and they refused to listen so I feel like that's where the anger and outrage is coming from because of the fact that all of this could have been prevented this man it's not that he was so smart it's not that he was so elusive it's just that here's my next point there is no value in human black lives there is more value in dogs in my um, in america but when it comes to white culture there is no value in non-white lives particularly and the people who suffer the most are black people so this documentary or this movie whatever it is has serves now as a trigger to people being outraged at the cries for centuries we keep telling you that guys that you guys don't value black people and this all if not all most of these people who lost their lives could have been saved they could have gotten away i believe there's a part in the documentary where this one of the people they actually made it out and the police sent him back into the house and apparently because especially back in those times people were not as tolerant when it comes to um people being gay openly gay and so now the police we have a double factor i am going to talk uh, on the homophobia of this but i'm going to make the key point that there is no value in black lives that even when black people were complaining for months that hey something is amiss people are going missing people are being killed the police just refused to listen which led to so many more lives that were lost that didn't have to be lost until black people are free until black people are valued in everyday interactions when it comes to the workplace the schooling system the police interaction with our neighbors until that happens no one will be safe and i am saying that because a lot of the times when certain people go missing it's worldwide news but when one hundreds of black people go missing yearly there is crickets nothing not a peep and so when that happened we see that black lives aren't being valued but when you who are who is not black you have someone who's gone missing you are asking for our sympathy you are asking for us to care we have to reflect on our own experiences and to some extent we just don't care because when we tell you guys hey this is what's happening to you cannot be okay and condone the injustice against black people but when it starts trickling to you that's when you have an issue with it and you want us to care you want us to be up in arms about it that will never happen so until black people are truly valued in this society as a whole you you will never know peace you will never know happiness because where injustice is allowed to happen in one case or multiple cases because of a certain group certain ethnicity uh, certain sexual orientation then it will eventually trickle down to other groups and those groups who did not care will then come back to ask those who have been dealing with it for a long time to help them out and they will simply not care and I think 
as sick as Jeffrey tried to be um, portray himself I'm not saying that he didn't have issues everyone has issues right I think the fact that he noticed that he was getting away with it successfully and the police didn't care so he continued there was no reason not to because i can continue to do what i do and there's going to be no repercussions now i did talk about the fact that he um targeted a lot of gay men the men were gay so there was no value in their lives as well because they were gay this goes back to my same point as long as you allow one group to be targeted mistreated disrespected murdered and all kinds of negative negative things as long as you allow it to happen to one group it's going to trickle down to other groups and because of the hatred and disdain that people in society have always had for gay people in this culture it was very evident that one they didn't care because not only were they black but they were also gay and I was watching another documentary on Netflix and it seemed that the people that this specific um, person targeted were gay because he knew that they would be at a disadvantage when it comes to the police caring and I'm sure Je um, Jeffrey used that to his advantage. The next point that I want to make is when are we going to as a society admit that white people are bad parents? Just the way that they try to make black mothers, particularly single black mothers responsible for their son's behavior who are usually more likely victims of the stereotype, stereotype threat, the environment and everything that goes on in this country and economical disadvantages the same way that you're trying to make um black women seem like they're responsible for all these things that their sons do that are negative which by the way is not most of the population it's just that it is more in your face so you think that black people are, are the ones out here committing these crimes when are we going to talk about the way that white parents parent or don't parent when are we going to admit that they allow their kids to get away with things they allow their kids to feel that the world is theirs they can do as they please and they will be protected and are often protected when are we going to let them take responsibility for raising better children so that we as society we can be safe now i'm very well aware of the fact that parents can't control their children you can be the best parent in the world and your child will still come up come out a certain way they're going to have their own personalities their own behaviors their own thought processes no matter what you do i'm very well aware of that but over i really want there to be a study on the way white parents parent and the consequences and the behavior and the later behaviors of their children going up and shooting up schools and murdering a bunch of people just the same way that there are a bunch of studies showing that single motherhood which is usually targeted at black women in america while when there are uh, you know single mothers everywhere the same way we need to start until we do that nobody's gonna be safe now i'm not trying to be politically correct i don't care what people feel about oh no i can't do this or this is about race it's not just about race it's about a pattern and practice that continues to yield certain results when are we going to acknowledge that I'm also very well aware that certain crimes like these don't happen everywhere. They are very common in Eurocentric cultures and mainly America. Let's admit this point also. America is a violent country. You have violence available 24 seven at your fingertips. People grew up on violence thinking that this is okay behavior and this yields copycats from the movies. You can turn on your TV 24 seven. I guarantee you, you'll find something violent to be inspired by. The point is America is a very violent country that continues to reinforce violence, not only in their practices, not only in their politics, but in everyday life, even in the most passive way. Even when you think you're just being entertained, even when you think you're just playing a game, even when you're just walking down the mall and seeing um, ads for things, violence is America. America is violence. This key point, 
that continues this country that continues to go around the world and mass murder and attack people and refuse to let people live happily because of money because of their own inferiority complexes this is the same country that breeds this type of people and this type of behavior and until something changes nothing changes now there are different opinions as to whether or not this documentary was necessary i personally do not feel that it was necessary and i feel that if a documentary like that was going to be made it should have been from the point of view of the victims the victim's family thereby highlighting the victims and try to get compensation and try to get true justice for them although true justice can never exist for them because they've already lost their loved ones despite the fact that some may argue this was necessary for educational purposes i do feel that there are other ways to educate the mass and the public about things like that and preventing things like that that goes back to my other point that i was trying to make why continue to inspire crazy people to do things like that i'm sure there were copycats and there will be copycat he's not the only serial killer and he won't be the last serial killer i'm sure there are people out there doing crazy things that we won't know about for years to come but the point is that um where is the education in that you are not taking into the fam account the family suffering i feel truly feel that a documentary like that should have highlighted the victims and very minimally involve the serial killer and the fact that the title itself is this killer's name you are literally giving this man a platform and making him more famous than he needed to be and the fact that there are more tapes coming out they're supposed to be released soon just it's very disgusting it's distasteful and i don't know if netflix is going to give the money back to the family i don't know if the families agreed to this i know with documentaries you don't necessarily need the family's approval unfortunately because information is available to the public and you're allowed to use it however i feel i don't know what deals that netflix or if any that they have with the families behind the scene but i find it very distasteful that they would make a documentary like this and not think to give back whatever they make they're making millions of dollars of of these people's pain and suffering when the truth is these people they lost a human being and like i said until there's an emphasis on the importance of a black life nothing will change everyone will continue to believe and be the same way that they are without wanting to make any changes and guess what if nothing changes nothing changes this goes hand in hand with continuing the line of black trauma porn as netflix has a bunch of movies i literally cannot find any movies based on black people that's not based on some kind of trauma when black people are alive we literally have a happy gene we literally it's literally encoded in our genetics to be happy to have a good time to have fun but they continue to perpetrate the stereotype threat by only showing the negative sides of black existence when we know for the most part black people are usually mostly no matter our circumstances or backgrounds or economic um status we are a happy people and we have happy lives and netflix as you'll see if you're trying to watch anything black fails to want to acknowledge that because again this is all rooted in white supremacy and the fact that they want to continue to only highlight negative aspects of black existence to have people believe that this is all it means to be black like i said the continuation of black trauma porn and devaluing of black people the cycle continues and then they try to highlight the person who caused this trauma to all these people and give him the platform put his name out there i bet you most people wouldn't even be able to tell me the names of any of the victims why because they didn't matter despite all that this man has done he 
in the way that he's being portrayed and the fact that he's being highlighted is more important as far as the story has been told than any of these people he murdered think about that this is the real problem I know there are those who also want to make the argument that he was neglected by his parents. He saw his mom do this, his dad do that. But guess what? Hmm? These people are literally just losers with violent tendencies. Because black people, all the pressure that's, I'm talking for black people in America and around the world. All the pressures that society put on us and all our restrictions and everything we go through. We don't go committing violent crimes like this. The world would have you believe that black people are the violent people. We are the aggressive people. When that couldn't be further from the truth. The difference is... People refuse to see white people as violent and aggressive and see them for the evil, conniving people that Jeffrey Dahmer was. And there are a bunch of people who still believe that as long as they're white, it's all right. Their skin color is all that matters and they are still superior, including the Netflix portrayal of this serial killer giving him a platform giving his name glory which is what essentially is with the sick people who are that out still out there who are happy with this person who love this person and he has a fan base let that sink in so this documentary in my opinion was not necessary it is in poor taste this has nothing to do with the actors i'm sure this these roles must have to have been emotionally taxing on them so it's not a reflection of them it's not a re reflection a reflection of their skills but what it truly is the disgusting ways that people still after someone murders 17 people glorify him in different ways anyway you guys Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you will subscribe to my videos. I hope you, um, to my channel. And I hope you will check out my other videos. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate your time and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.